Xenoverse 2 came out at the end of 2016. That was almost eight years ago. Holy crap. And in the year 2024, I am finally playing the game for the first time. Right off the bat, the controls for this game feel so much better than Xenoverse 1. It is hard to convey through video alone, but just by walking through the hub world for the first time, I could instantly tell the difference. Now I am literally playing Xenoverse 2 right after the first game, so this improvement was way more apparent for me than it might have been for those who had to wait a couple of years in between releases. At the first game, actions felt a bit stiff, especially when switching from using a melee attack to a key attack. The fighting is so much smoother, the attacks flow together so much better. It's amazing how such a subtle improvement can make such a huge difference. Also just adding a few more icons like where the gates are for instance makes the navigation way less cumbersome. There's just a lot of little touches like that that really start to add up. Like the better HUD, menus, buttons, oh man I love buttons, Beep, boop. everything is just better. Even the tutorial is better, even though the controls are pretty much the exact same, it just teaches you them better. If you have a character in Xenoverse 1, you can transfer them over to get some extra stuff, like the clothes they were wearing, their money and their skills. So basically taking them for everything that they've got. There will also be a memorial statue of them in the centre of the town. It makes me wonder if my character from the last game died or something. Is it dead? Because that's what it looks like. This game is only set two years after the first one, so it's not like it was way in the future and she died of old age. I'm, I'm guessing she got lost in time. <laughs> the crack in time. For those who watched my Xenoverse 1 retrospective, you will know that I had huge problems with being constantly disconnected from the server. As of yet, I have not experienced any issues like that with this game. Now I feel vindicated in the fact that I knew it was not my internet, it was definitely the game servers. It's kind of crazy how much support this game is still getting, and it was updated as recently as a few days ago. Which is fantastic, as there are so many online games out there that promise to be supported for up to like two years, and then they just get abandoned. There is a reason why the term live service makes a lot of gamers cringe. Since the online aspect of this game is still alive and well, hopefully I will actually be able to play with other people this time. Then again, maybe not. But it is still early days and I even mustered up the courage to ask someone if they would do some co-op with me. But they haven't answered me yet, so for the sake of my self-confidence, I'm just going to pretend that they haven't read my message yet and not that they don't want to have anything to do with me. <laughs> Parallel quests now have an easy and normal difficulty setting, which may seem like a small thing, but it actually makes grinding way more fun for the early game. If you have some DLC packs like I do, the parallel quests for those DLCs are really high difficulty quests, like pretty much end game is when you'll be a high enough level to do them. And the same thing happened in Xenoverse 1 too, so you pretty much had to wait until the end, if you could make it to the end, to play your DLC shit. <laughs> but now with the easy mode, you can sacrifice some of the rewards to be able to play these quests at a much lower level, and it works pretty well, at least from what I played. I got to fight against some Super Saiyan 4s. I didn't win because I ran out of time, but I still got a ton of experience. And it was fun. And when grinding is fun, you're definitely onto a winner there. Another issue that I had with Xenoverse was I hated the layout of the hub world. It was way too large and empty and was a pain to get around. The hub world in this game is way more open. It is still really large, but it isn't segmented by loading screens, so it is way less tedious to walk around. Also, you are able to fly around it, uh, eventually anyway. I haven't played long enough to be able to do that yet, but you do get this hoverboard thing. <laughs> it's kind of all good control, but it's fast, so that makes it good. So yay, because running around in the first game was probably my least favourite part about it. <laughs> I will say though, I think Xenoverse One's opening was way better. It basically just starts with you controlling a really overpowered Goku, and you get to experiment with the controls and stuff. 
but here it's kind of a more standard opening with you creating your character and then going into the tutorial which you can choose to skip if you like which is a nice touch the opening cinematic was so awesome and i love the art style they went with which made it even more disappointing that they didn't go with the same graphical style in the game it's very similar to Xenoverse 1, but it seems that they may have turned down the specular shine a tad. But just a tad. As in the first game, it was very... <laughs> overpowering. <laughs> While playing through the first mission, I got a serious case of deja vu. Is it just me, or does the first mission in this game play exactly the same as the first mission in the first game? Do you know what I mean? Also, this animation kind of freaks me out, and this is from one of the first cutscenes you see. The Supreme Kai of Time also does it. Please stop. Even though I've only played for a few hours, I kind of understand why so many people said that I should just skip Xenoverse 1 and go on to 2, as they've even added a DLC that is just the story mode of Xenoverse 1. I kind of wish I played this version of it instead. 